In this project, we'll be looking at ways to paint the simple tropical leaf shape of the cheese plant. For this series, we're going to be using a drawing grid. This will help me to show you how to get the shapes into proportion and positioned well inside your picture area. You will need to draw out a grid like this. 12 centimetres by 12 centimetres and then draw two horizontal lines this way and two vertical lines this way. Each of these areas here should be four centimetres by four centimetres each. Of course you could draw your grid a lot larger if you want your drawing to be larger but I think it's quite fun to work on a small scale especially when you're starting out. It's a good idea to use cheap copy paper to do this stage so that you feel less worried about doing it perfectly and you can just enjoy the sketching. Once you've drawn your grid you can then either draw it each time that you're going to do a new piece of artwork or you can photocopy it several times so you've got lots of grids ready for each drawing that we do. A cheese plant leaf can be quite a complicated shape but we can reduce that down to some geometric shapes to help us get into the space. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to draw a circle within my drawing grid. So I don't want the circle to be in the centre of the space, I want it to be up and towards the left a bit. So I'm going to start in this top left corner and just draw a curve between these two points. And then I'm going to take it down into the next box. Like so. And then down to here. along this corner here, back up, and round back to meet the top again. Again, we're drawing natural shapes, it's not a perfect circle, it doesn't need to be. And then I want to um, draw myself a triangle, so I'm going to put a point just down here. Now this point is about halfway across this box, but it isn't halfway down this box, it's just below. So if it helps you to, you could just do a cross of equal squares in that box and just find your way to that point there. Once you've found that, then Make yourself a dot here where the line intersects this box. And then another point around about down here. Then draw a triangle shape where those two points meet each other. And these do the same. Again, just nice loose lines, just feel your way to the right place. So you've really got just a circle and a triangle. Next, let's draw a line to just help us understand where the centre or centre line of this leaf is. Um, so let's make a a dot there where we're starting and draw a line straight down to the point of this triangle here. From there draw a curve just coming up to meet this line and another curve coming up to meet this line. And from there, bring your pencil line down, follow, follow the line of the circle that you've got 
as you get down here just widen it a bit so you've got like a softer curve that comes down to meet the point of your triangle there and in the same way do a sweeping line follows this down and curves out and round so you've got a much softer shape and then what you can do is just rub away some lines that we don't need anymore so anything inside here can go just keep that central line keep this central line for now and rub away the other lines clean that up a little bit and we can take off the pointy bit there of our triangle because it is a softer point in here and we don't actually need this section up here anymore so let's let's take that out now quite sort of heart shaped leaf then at this point so from that then we want to um, create a little bit of detail on the edges of our leaf and what I'm looking for really is um, a sort of bendy sausage shape so come down this edge here when it gets to roundabout intersecting with that line just do yourself curve doesn't come right to the center and back out again and what you'll notice is that that shape is wider this end and it's thinner this end and this inner curve is quite rounded and when it comes back to the line there's quite a sharp point there so you can do that on the other side as well so think about how far you came down it's about the same to there and then you want a nice curvy shape coming in slightly wider on the inside and thinner as it comes out again and then we want two about halfway down so same thing again try and make sure that you you get a nice curve with these because it will give the sense of the curved leaf so if it helps you you can do a soft curve like that and then you can follow, follow in on that line. So wider and then thinner. Wider and then thinner. And let's do the same down here. Let's use a curve to help us. So starting at this point here, do a very light curve like that. So it's a bit of a sharper curve. And we're going to go in and out for the shape, in and out for the shape. So then we can get rid of some of the lines that we don't need. Let's tidy that up a little bit. We can start to see our leaf appearing. And then I want to go back to the top of the leaf and this is a bit sharp as it comes down through here. So I want to take a nice smooth line like that and just soften off that top angle. So we can then remove that dot. And we've got a nicer, smoother edge to our leaf. So these leaves typically have some holes in them as well. So let's just draw those in. So we want some holes of different sizes. So these are really just oval shapes. And they will tend to be a little bit nearer the, the top of the leaf rather than further down. So maybe do 
five holes of different sizes. And then we can get rid of our central lines. Don't need that anymore. And there's your lovely leaf shape ready to trace through onto some art paper and we can paint it. So now I'm going to draw my shape, my leaf shape through onto art paper. So I'm using watercolours for this one. So I've got watercolour paper and um, you can see I've got it on the light box, which means that the image will shine through to my paper. So as mentioned before, you can use tracing paper to trace the shape down or you could try putting your image against a bright window and put your paper in front, it should have the same effect. So make sure that you sharpen your pencil nicely. And for this drawing, I would say just draw very, very lightly. Don't, don't do any really heavy dark lines because when we paint this in, we want it to look quite delicate. And you literally just trace around your shapes. The holes in. Try and make them a bit more oval than round. Just a rusk of my shapes there. And that's your finished leaf ready to paint. So now we're ready to paint our leaf. And you can see here one that I um, used as a, a bit of a sample. So we've really only got one simple shape to fill in. So really the challenge here is to get a variety of greens within that shape. So it looks nice and tropical. Um, so the colours that I've used um, for this are a very light green ink. So if you're using regular watercolours and you don't have this really limey green, you can um, use a, a start with a bright yellow and add a little bit of green to it. That will make a very sort of light green to start with. Um, I've got a mid green and I've got a much darker green. And what I might do to make that dark green really dark, I might add a little bit of blue to it when I get to that part. But I'll show you, I'll show you how I get there. And they're really all the colours that we need. So um, I came to that conclusion by making myself some little colour samples and letting those colours flood together. So what I would really suggest that you do is to have a go of that yourself. Just have a little play around with the colours, let them melt together, wet your surface first and let the colours um, float together. And then you can just have fun filling in this main shape. So that's what I'll show you how to do that. So I've got a nice fresh palette then and um, a couple of smaller brushes really this one's uh, the size 7 that I use for most things um, it's got a really nice point to it and a slightly smaller one if I want to get into some corners with that so I've got those handy I've got some fresh water and um, my paints all ready and I'm going to put out some of the paints so let's start with the lighter green just going to put this one out first this is the first colour that's going to go down. So I appreciate that this is easy for me because I'm using these watercolour inks. They're already mixed up, so they're a lovely colour consistency to start with and you just add water to them to make them thinner. If you're working from 
watercolours that are in tubes or possibly in the little half pans um, you'll have to work a little bit harder at making yourself a decent puddle of colour to use but it's worth just taking that time to get enough paint there ready to paint the area that you have um, rather than just putting a little bit of paint out and then wishing you're getting halfway and realising that you've run out so um, it's a good rule of thumb. So what I'm going to do first is just to wet this area inside the leaf. So get my fresh water and I'm just going to fill the shape with the fresh water. Try to sort of stick to your edges if you can because the paint's going to want to go wherever the paper is wet. So if you do go too much over your lines then that's where your paint will go as well. If you're not sure where you've gone with your water just lift your paper and tip it towards the light you should be able to sort of see which bits are wet and which bits aren't Right, okay, just double check that it's still nice and wet at the top where I started. That's okay. So let's grab that puddle of very light yellowy green and because that surface is nice and wet that should flow into there really easily. Uh, this is just our base colour, so we're going to put this in and then we're going to add other colours to it. There you go, that's your first colour. So once you've filled in this area, it's a good idea to just let this first layer dry because we want to add another wash, but we don't want to disturb the colour that you've got there. So I'm just going to go off for a second, um, 
use a hair dryer just to get that dry before I do my next layer and you can do the same. Now the next thing to do is um, get ready our other greens that we want to use. So I've used the light green, let's go for the mid green and make a puddle of this or get some that ready on your palette. Pop that up there so it doesn't mix with the other one straight away. And also the darker green that we're going to use. So let's get that ready. And to make that really dark, I'm going to mix a tiny little bit of blue in there, a darker blue. Any blue that you have will be fine, just to really make that nice and deep. And then use a little drop of that. And I know that they're sitting there nice and ready for me. So let's go back to the drawing. And now that that's all dry, that first layer that I put down, what I want to do is just wet the surface again, clean water, clean brush, and just go over it again in the way that you did before. So what we're doing is we're making another wet area for the paint to um, float about in. Because our first layer is dry underneath it's just going to sit there nicely for us and not move about Just remember to tilt your head to the side a little bit so that you can see a light shining on the surface of your of your painting and you can make sure that everywhere that you've gone in there is actually nice and damp on the surface. If it's still shiny, it means it's still damp. Got a little bit of fluff on there as we take away. Um, so let's then go in with the mid green that we've got ready here and just kind of work from the top to the bottom from the middle outwards. So I'm going to start here and you see as soon as I put that colour on top there, it starts to float away into those other areas. Now just remember that watercolour is one of those paints that likes to do its own thing. So we think that we're controlling it, but actually it tends to do what it likes a lot of the time. Um, and every time you paint something like this, it will come out completely different to another time. But that's that's the beauty of watercolour. And once you kind of accept that and let it do its own thing a little bit, then it's much nicer to use. So I'm working my way down here, down from the centre and then just kind of working the paint outwards a little bit from there. So I want to leave some areas that are that lighter green. So as I come out to these side areas here, I want that to kind of float off and, and leave the lighter green, uh, sorry, yeah, the, the lightest green at the side. So if I find that I'm getting some um, harsh edges, if I just wet my brush and just make sure that it's not loaded too much with water by squeezing it out. I can blend off some of those edges there so that they're softer. So you need to do that with a clean, damp brush. And you can do the same down here. So that's the way to sort of get rid of the 
any harshness that we've got there. I might add a little bit more of this mid green from the central point down into here. It's started to dry a little bit at the bottom, that's not a problem because I can use a damp brush again to blend out. Or I might like to actually fill that area. I think I will actually. I'm going to fill that area with that mid green. Mix another colour out here. Right to there. So don't worry if yours looks different to mine. As I say, everybody's will come out differently. Depending on how wet your paper is, what paints you're using and things like that. So as long as you're getting that kind of mixed up blend of colour like that, that's quite nice. So before that starts to dry too much, I'm going to um, go in from the top with my darker green. So I'd already put a bit of blue in there, so I know that's really dark. And I'm going to start from the middle again. To blend out. So we're not completely covering the green we just put on. We're going to add to it with this darker green. So just speed it around and out towards those edges as, as much as you can. Let it just float because you can see that's already kind of melting into the other colours that we've got there. You can always add to it if it's not dark enough. See there that, that this area here has got a little bit dry as I've been working on the other areas. So I can come back to that and blend that off. Memo. So I've just wet my brush. It's nice and clean. I've taken most of the water out of it. I'm going to blend those edges out. I'm going to take that right to the edge, I think. Wet it again on the edge. And then let's go back to some darker. I want to get the center of this really nice and dark, so I'm going to add a bit more into there. Sometimes you're just kind of tapping it in like that. So if that surface is wet enough and it's going to carry the paint paint's going to be able to float on top of the surface because it's still wet you can just kind of lightly tap the surface with your brush and it will deliver the, the paint to it that way come back down into this area so this has got quite dry down here so I'm going to use my damp brush to blend that out a bit Otherwise, I'll end up with some hard edges. Just do the same here, just leave that out a little bit more. dry so let's use the damp brush there so in the center here it's got a little bit untidy so I'm just going to tidy that area up And still wet in the middle, and I really fancy just 
in a few dark bits in there. So I'm just literally dropping them in here and there and letting them float about just from that central area. If you accidentally put, um, drop some paint like that onto a dry area like there, you think, oops, that wasn't wet enough, I didn't want to put it there. Just get your clean damp brush and blend away again. No, no, no. You need a little error. So I'm going to let that settle for a bit, but still remaining damp. And then you can try just dropping some a, a tiny bit of um, fresh water just into the darker area and you'll see how that splits that colour up a little bit. And it just makes a bit more texture for your leaf. star shapes here and there. Quite fun. So you might be happy to um, finish at that point. I was just going to remove some of my pencil lines from the outside just to try and make it a little bit more delicate. Um, it's all a matter of choice really. So you're doing these drawings in pencil and you end up with some kind of outline. Um, sometimes it's nice to rub away that line. Um, and other times you might feel that you want to actually draw another outline. So you might want to use like a um, black pen or something to reinforce that outline. So it's all a matter of choice of what you want to end up with. On this occasion, I'm just going to rub some of that away. Like to just really make sure that your painting is very dry, obviously, before you do this. puffy elbow which is very soft lots of bits fall off it as you use it and those inside bits as well could be a bit tidier so I kind of like the look of that where where you've got sort of where you've painted over some of your pencil lines, they'll they'll still be a little bit there, but generally most of them have gone. So it just kind of makes the leaf look a little bit more delicate. So I hope you enjoyed the process of painting your leaf and learned a few more things. Um, I look forward to seeing you next time.